I'm a professor and doctor of philosophy and work at the Institute of Philosophy, Russian Academy of Sciences uh, in Moscow. You would not believe how many years I worked there, more than 50 and <laughs> out there. I am chief uh, researcher and uh, <coughs> UNESCO chairholder for philosophy uh, in the dialogue of culture. But of course, uh, um, I have been always uh, interested in public life and participated in different way. So uh, Dialogue of Civilization is uh, that organization with which I am associated since uh, uh, 2006. Uh, before I started to do intercultural education for the schools, I did a lot for uh, teaching philosophy um, for the students at the Faculty of Philosophy and Political Sciences at the university. And my course was different from uh, uh, common courses that it wasn't Europe-centric. It was, you, know, you remember, Hegel said that, uh, of course, uh, a philosophy uh, started in uh, India and China, but we shall not include it in the uh, course of history because it hasn't been developed. So, of course, since Hegel's time, the attitude is different. And um, I uh, thought that it's very important to introduce to the students, to everybody, not only to those who just wish to take a course. We have for uh, Indian and Iranian students. Uh, somehow with Chinese uh, exchanges, it's not developed uh, as much as they would like. Partly because we teach uh, ancient languages languages which are needed for philosophy. For example, it is Sanskrit, not Hindi, it is Farsi, uh, old one, um, and it is um, uh, <coughs> not uh, they mean, but it is, uh, they would like us to have contemporary Chinese, but with contemporary Chinese, you will not be able to read all Chinese texts. As a philosopher, we of course uh, concentrate on uh, philosophical traditions, but <coughs> Iran is very interesting because, uh, as you know, after uh, the uh, very rich golden uh, period of the development, cultural and philosophical development in uh, Arabic world, after 12th century, 12th, 13th century, philosophy uh, wasn't developing as uh, it, it was before. But Iran uh, continued to develop and it, they contributed a lot. And that is thanks uh, to um, that cultural heritage, including philosophical heritage, which they had before the calm of Islam. Uh, here is the Zoroastrianism plays a very important role and uh, Shia teachings different um, direction. I myself, for example, was very much interested in the encounter of Zoroastrianism with Islam uh, because uh, while um, UNESCO asked me to prepare <coughs> a report uh, how devastating it was the encounter of um, Zoroastrians with Islam. I found out that it was not so all simple. It was devastating in some way, but it, uh, Zoroastrian has never left uh, Iran and has never left uh, the uh, stage of philosophy. In particular, it has played very important role on Sufism. And you know that mystical thinking is very well developed uh, um, in Iran. We have uh, classes twice a week for those who wish to study Farsi mm -hmm. at the Iranian Cultural Center, like Indian Cultural Center, uh, pays for this uh, to the teachers for teaching Sanskrit and Farsi. Uh, uh, before revolution, of, of course, it wasn't primacy. After revolution, for some time, it was really 
it was a difficult time. Uh, but now I think they are doing that uh, because I meet the Iranian philosophers very often and they participate in different uh, international forums. Uh, they are very professional, so uh, they give a very balanced uh, point of view and uh, mm, uh, the emphasis on Islam is not the most important, more important for them to make the emphasis on philosophical solution or this or that problem. For example, if you take India, in India, uh, because I taught in India at the university and I went so many times to participate with Indian Philosophical Congress sessions and I know that they teach philosophy, uh, um, in, uh, Indian philosophy, in the Department of Philosophy. But if you want to teach uh, to study a classical Indian philosophy, you have to go to Sanskrit divisions, uh, which is very strange. So because um, I at the Department of Philosophy, uh, they used to teach practically European philosophy, Western philosophy. I think it's, it's wrong, but I th uh, nowadays I think it's changes. Uh, the new direction, um, this is ideological direction, uh, <laughs> which has its good and uh, uh, poor points. As to the China, um, in China, <coughs> I think they always continue to teach um, uh, Chinese philosophy, but not so much as it is now, because um, during revolutionary time, uh, Confucius was, uh, or that was, uh, it was not uh, really, uh, uh, attention was not paid to them, but um, <coughs> this trend on philosophy developed by Chinese communities in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, fortunately, and now it goes on in, uh, yes, in China. So next, yeah. next World Congress of Philosophy, by the way, will be next year. It's once in five years. So for the first time, it will be next year, in the end of August, in Beijing.